Hello and uh, welcome to our latest webinar. Today's theme is Mastering SPL ESG Errors, where we'll discuss common electronic submission gateway errors and their solutions. My name is Amanpreet Kant. I am I4I's Regulatory Affairs Team Lead. My colleague Arun Vijay Kumar and I will be uh, giving today's presentation. There's lots of information to cover and we'll have a Q&A session to follow. As always, this presentation is being recorded and the recording will be made available to all registered attendees. I know that many of you have already attended some of our webinars in the past. Thank you for your continued interest. Uh, before we dive in, I just want to go over a bit housekeeping. So during the webinar, all mics are muted except for the presenters. If you experience an echo, check that your mic is muted in the WebEx window. The microphone icon should be red and have a cross through it. If the echo persists and uh, you're using a phone for your audio, please mute all audio devices on your computer. If time allows at the end of the presentation, we will do our best to answer your questions. If you have a question at any point during the webinar, please type your question in the Q&A panel. To send a message in the Q&A, click the Q&A button near the bottom right. Make sure that you select the All Co-hosts option from the Ask dropdown. Enter your question in the text area, then press Enter. If you don't see these buttons, click the view menu and select the show meeting controls option. Again, we will do our best to answer all the questions that we get. If we cannot answer the question during the Q&A, we will contact you with a follow up. On the agenda for today, Arun will start us off with a look at what you will receive from the FTA after submitting your SPL to the ESG, and then we'll review some of the common errors you may receive at the ESG, such as the table element errors and establishment errors. He will then pass things over to me to continue looking at other common errors, such as product characteristics and NDC errors. So let's get things started with Arun. Arun, over to you. Thank you, Amin. Good afternoon, everyone. So in this section, we'll give a brief explanation of acknowledgments received after submitting an SPL to the ESG. When an SPL has been successfully submitted via the ESG, you'll receive two acknowledgement files and a receipt file. The acknowledgements will have the extensions .ack and .txt. The receipt is always a .txt file. If an SPL submission has failed, you will still receive three files. However, in place of the .ack acknowledgement file, there will be an XML file. This XML file contains details about the error or errors that caused the submission to fail. To read the details of the XML file and discover what errors caused your submission to fail, you'll need to download the XML file and open it up in a browser. Now let's take a look at 12 of the most common ESG errors that our clients receive for their submission and how to resolve these errors in order for your SPL documents to be successfully accepted by the FDA. The first error we'll look at is that the number of table data elements must be identical to the number of column elements in each table. This error includes script tags that may seem a bit cryptic, especially if you haven't had to look at any raw XML code. So what this error is flagging is that the borders of one or more cells is not aligned with other cells. 
the table might publish with the number of cells in a row greater or less than the number of columns. Fortunately, the misaligned borders are usually easy to spot. In this first example, there is an arm sticking out. So you can realign this table border to, <clears throat> to make the table a proper rectangle. Once the border has been aligned, it'll be treated as one column. In this second example, the cell border in row four, highlighted here, does not align with the column border in rows one and two. You can realign this border by selecting on the cell and dragging the borders to match rows one and two. Please note that it's okay for cells to span across two columns. The issue occurs if a cell does not span, but its border has been changed so that it does not line up with the other cells in the same column. Unfortunately, not every misalignment is very easy to see. So in this last example, we've highlighted where a border is misaligned. However, as the misalignment is very slight, an author, reviewer, or an approver might easily overlook it. In an upcoming release of A4L, we will help you mitigate this error by including a flag for this in our validation. In the meantime, if you get this ESG error, check your tables to make sure that the borders line up. This next error is very common and can be resolved very easily. With many of the errors, you'll know that the solution, you'll know what the solution is as soon as you read the error message. This is one of those types of errors. If you get an error stating that the value of version number must be greater than the value of any previously submitted version for the same set ID, it's basically asking you to increment the version to the next whole number from your previous SPL document version. Note that it must be a whole number and not a number with decimals. So if your previous submission is at version two and you try to submit a lower version or the same version, it's going to fail. You'll need to, you'll need to assure that you submit an incremented version from your previous version. So when should you update the version number? The answer is whenever you make an update to the SPL and the SPL is accepted by the FDA, the next update should have an incremented version number. Another reason for this mismatch would be that if the SPL was submitted to the FDA with a future marketing start date and the SPL gets accepted by the FDA but it's not posted on DailyMed or the FDA's label repository because of the future date. This can cause confusion regarding the version number for A4L professional clients. So even though the SPL is not publicly available, it was still accepted by the FDA. This means that if you now have to submit the same SPL with a new change, the version, the version number needs to be incremented from the version accepted by the FDA, even though the previous version visible on DailyMed is two numbers lower. So when should you not update the version? You don't need to change the version number if your submission returned with a failure message. Just fix what caused the error and resubmit since your submission didn't go through to the FDA, so that version number wasn't registered in the system. Please note that the version number is linked to not only the set ID, but also the NDC number in the file. I've experienced that sometimes a client already had an SPL file with an NDC submitted to the FDA, but maybe due to changes in employees or other reasons that the same NDC is then attempted to be submitted in a brand new SPL with a new set ID and version one. This will result in the same error along with an error for the set ID mismatch with the NDC. Another common error we get asked about is this one. 
the outer package item code must not be associated with any other set ID except under parts. Therefore, the original set ID included in the previous version of the file with the outer package item code should be used. Now, this error could be a little bit confusing to understand, but we can kind of tell by just reading the error message that it's talking about the set ID mismatch. The term outer package item code here is referring to the NDC code or the national drug code, which is a 10 digit and three segment code used to identify and report drug products. The NDC code is unique per product. Except under parts means that the parts of a kit are excluded from this validation check, which means that the NDC used for any part of the kit can also be used along with another set ID or another SPL. So if the very first version of the SPL submitted to the FDA has a particular set ID or a unique identifier GUID, then all versions thereafter must have the exact same set ID because a set ID is supposed to remain consistent throughout the life of the SPL document. If you come across this error and for some reason you don't have access to the previous version of the SPL, then you can either go to DailyMed or the FDA's label.gov websites to look for that SPL. In case of establishment registration, bulk ingredient, drugs for further processing, or other SPLs that are not available publicly, you can reach out to the FDA by sending an email to spl at fda.hhs.gov. Another error we are asked about is that the set ID is not associated with any other registrant ID. To clarify, registration ID is referring to the DUNS number. So there could be multiple reasons why you're facing this error in your establishment registration SPL submissions. One, there could be a set ID mismatch and this can be easily fixed by checking the set ID in previous version, the previous version like we discussed in the previous error. Two, maybe you're trying to submit the same DUNS in a second establishment registration SPL, which cannot be done since the establishment DUNS can only be included in one ER SPL. But in case of mergers or acquisitions, if you need to transfer the information from one ER SPL to another, then you need to remove that information from the previously submitted file in order for your current file to be accepted by the FDA. Another reason could be that the DUNS number associated with the registrant has changed since the last submission of the ERSPL. We'll expand on this last case in the next slide. If there's a change in the DUNS number, you'll need to submit an out of business notification SPL file or an establishment deregistration SPL document. Then on this rare occasion, change the set ID of your ER SPL file, which has the new registrant's DUNS number. Please be extremely careful when doing this step as we must be sure that we submit the out of business notification or establishment deregistration SPL file prior to the submission of the new ERSPL document, and that both are submitted on the same day. Thus, keep your new ERSPL file validated and ready to go. You should submit the new ERSPL file as soon as the out of business or deregistration SPL file is accepted via the ESG. Doing so decreases the window in which your establishments are in a state of deregistration from the FDA's database. You definitely won't want to wait for days in between these two steps. So in this scenario, we would create an out of business ER document and we would submit that out of business ER document via the ESG the out of business ER document is accepted. And then a new ER document is created 
has a new set ID, submit this new ER document to the ESG, and then the new ER document is accepted. For our next error, this error states that the DUNS number, along with the establishment name and address information, must match the DUNS number record in the Dunn and Bradstreet database. This is again an error you might receive for your ER submissions. So what does it mean? The name, address, and DUNS number for each drug establishment must match the information in the DNB DUNS number database. Even a small difference, like a space or a period at the end of a name, will be detected and your submission will fail. Please note, if you believe that the information you have entered is correct, send an email to spl at fda.hhs.gov with the core ID of the submission to request a manual override. The ESG assigns a unique identifier to the submission called the core ID. The acknowledgement with the .ack extension has the core ID as its file name. This acknowledgement is known as the ACK2. The ACK2 is generated with a submission timestamp and the core ID. The user should use the core ID as a reference for any submission related qu queries sent to the ESG team. There are three scenarios in which we may receive this error. Firstly, the information in the file doesn't match the DNB database, in which case you can fix the information to match the DNB database and then submit your file. Maybe the information in the file doesn't match the DNB database, but you believe it's correct, in which case you need to contact the DNB database to get your information updated before you can submit your file or the information in the file matches the DMB database, but you're still getting an error. We'll expand on this last case in the next slide. So the information matches the DNB, but you still receive the same error. This can happen sometimes because the error is due to minor discrepancies in the name, address, or DUNS number. In this case, the FDA can manually override the file because of the minor discrepancy in the DNB database. You can request the manual override by sending the core ID of the submission to spl at fda.hhs.gov. We'll show an example of a missing period in the address stored in the DNB database. So the customer ER document with the address as listed here, 22 here street, is submitted to the gateway The address doesn't match the DNB database, so an FDA error report is generated. An email request is sent for a manual override to the FDA, and the explanation for the override request points out that the missing period in the DNB database. ER submission is now accepted due to the manual override. To see that it's been accepted, please access the Drug Establishment Current Registration website. Note that the only time you'll be notified via email in response to your manual override request is if your request is not granted. So what does this next error involve? The establishment ID, which is the DUNS number for the establishment, matches an establishment with the same ID submitted in docs of type establishment registration in the same or previous calendar year. This error indicates that there's a difference between the DUNS number in your product SPL submission and the DUNS number in the ER submission file that your product SPL refers to. The DUNS number for an establishment entered in a product listing SPL file must match the information submitted in an establishment registration SPL file. 
So the solution here is to make sure to match the DUNS number in your SPL submission with the DUNS number in the establishment registration file you're referencing. I'm now going to pass the presentation over to my colleague, Amin. Thank you, Arun, and hello again, everyone. The next error is a new validation error. I won't read the whole error out, but in essence, it states that uh, if the product is a kit or a co-packaged product with a document type being either a bulk ingredient, human OTC, or human prescription drug label, then each inner component product with a drug marketing category must have a unique NDC product code. Let's take a look at what this means. In a kit drug listing submission, the NDC that is assigned to the overall kit should be different than the NDC assigned to each drug part of the kit. In the example on the left, the NDC of the parts are the same as the NDC of the overall kit, which will trigger the ESG error. To resolve the error, you will have to include unique inner component NDCs to each part of the kit, such as in the example on the right. In addition, if you are missing an NDC from the part level and the SPL document type is bulk ingredient, human OTC, or human prescription, then it will trigger this error too. The exemptions are the SPLs with marketing categories cosmetic, dietary supplement, exempt device, humanitarian device exemption, medical food, pre-market application or pre-market notification. Next, we'll discuss some product characteristics errors. We'll use the size, color, and imprint code characteristics errors as an example. These errors occur due to the mismatch of the product characteristics in the product data elements section of your current SPL version as compared to the previous version submitted to the FDA. So basically, if your previous SPL version submitted to the FDA has a size 15 mm entered in the product data elements, but in the latest SPL submission, you're trying to submit size 10 mm for the same NDC, then your submission is going to fail. And this is how your validation report may look. By clicking on the errors, it will take you to the exact location of the error within the report, and then you can expand the characteristic coding by clicking on it once to see the actual values. This report will show you both values from your current submission version, as well as the previously submitted version. And this way you can see the exact mismatch and correct it by either assigning a new NDC code to the product in case it's a change in formulation, or you can fix the characteristic to match the previous version and then resubmit the SPL. However, if the change is due to a correction and not an update to the NDC product, this can be manually overridden by explaining the error to the FDA. Please assure that you fix all other errors, if any, in the file before requesting a manual override for the errors that require an override. So you submit the SPL to the ESG. It fails because of mismatched product characteristics. In this example, the previous version was incorrect and you are submitting a new version to correct this. Email the core ID to the FDA at spl at fda.hhs.gov with an explanation. For example, you can say that there's been a typo in the previous submission and that you are trying to correct it. The explanation is then reviewed by the FDA along with the SPL document. And then the manual override submission is accepted considering there's no other issue with the file.
Error 9 states, if the NDC product or item code was previously submitted, then the active ingredient unis and active ingredient strengths are the same as in the most recent submission for this NDC product slash item code, except if there is no marketing status other than new or cancelled. Okay, let's unpack this a little bit. So the error states that the active ingredients uni or the unique ingredient identifier code, its preferred name, as well as its strength must be consistent with the previous version submitted to the FDA. If there's a mismatch in any or all of these, that will trigger this error. The exception to this rule is a file with status new or cancelled, which is used for NDC reservations. And if there's a change in the preferred uni name for that ingredient in the FDA's database itself since your last submission and you're submitting the most recent uni name, this could also be detected as a change and your submission will fail. In this case, a manual override needs to be requested. So you submit your SPL document. An error report is generated then you submit an override request. Reason is that you're using the updated preferred uni name from the FDA's database. And then the manual override submission should be accepted. You can check for this update on the FDA substance registration system for unique ingredient identifier or uni. Simply type the name in the search box and click the search button. It will then give you a list of ingredients along with their synonyms. You can also double check whether you're using the correct combination of the active ingredient and active moiety in your SPL, as well as the basis of strength by referring to the active ingredient, active moiety relationship slash basis of strength spreadsheet on the FDA's SPL resources webpage. This list can be found under the uh, heading SPL terminology files sorry, SPL terminology files for validation. And we'll provide a link to all these sites when we'll send you the webinar recording. Error 10, uh, so this error deals with controlled substances. It states if the product item code or NDC is not on the DEA exempt products list, then the DEA schedule matches the one in the controlled substance table where all supplied constraints match except for products regulated by CVM. So the DEA schedule entered in the SPL must match the DEA controlled substance list. This list can be found on the FDA's SPL resources webpage, same as the active ingredient active moiety relationship list we just talked about. So let's discuss a few different scenarios related to this error. In the first three rows, we'll use the controlled substance carfentanil as an example. In the first row, the SPL does not include the DEA scheduled data for carfentanil, and carfentanil is not on the DEA exemption list. Therefore, it fails validation, and an error report is generated from the ESG. In the second row, the SPL includes the incorrect DEA schedule data for carfentanil. Therefore, it fails validation and an error report is generated from the ESG. In the third row, the DEA schedule data for carfentanil included in the SPL matches the one that's found in the DEA controlled substance list. Therefore, it passes validation and no error is generated from the ESG. In the last row, we use the controlled substance butalbital as an example. The controlled substance is present in the DEA exempt products list. Therefore, a DEA schedule is not required in the SPL. The SPL passes the validation and no error is generated from the ESG. 
Please note that both these lists are located within the DEA schedule link under the SPL terminology files for validation heading on the FDA's SPL resources webpage. Error 11 states that if the NDC product slash item code was previously submitted, then the product dosage form must be the, must be same as in the most recent submission for this NDC product slash item code. So the product dosage form is also associated with the NDC code of the drug. Thus, if you are making a change as compared to the previous version in the FDA's database, you will get an error. If there's a change in the dosage form, but you use the same NDC, an error report is generated. Instead, a new NDC is required. So this is because the old dosage form is associated with the current NDC code within the FDA's database, and therefore a new NDC is required for the new dosage form, and that will not trigger an error, and your file will be accepted by the FDA. But what if you're making a correction? If you're making a minor correction, you can explain that when sending a manual override request. So you make the correction to a previously submitted version, then you submit uh, the SPL to the ESG, but also need to request a manual override from the FDA. Here, the override request is because of a correction, after which the submitted correction should be accepted by the FDA. Please note that the FDA will check the entire file along with the content in the full prescribing information when you're sending a manual override request. Therefore, please assure that uh, the information in the labeling part matches the product's data elements as well. The FDA will not only check the error that you're requesting the manual override for, but will also analyze your entire document for other discrepancies, which may sometimes delay the manual override. Okay, error 12 states, the first segment, the NDC NREC labeler code, must match a labeler code associated with the labeler ID, which is the labeler's DUNS number, in a previously submitted NDC NRIC labeler code or NDC labeler code animal drug SPL document, except for parts. So the product data elements in a product SPL are linked to the establishment registration and labeler code request SPLs that were previously submitted to the FDA. When you submit a product listing SPL, the FDA's validation checks that data in association with these other SPL files in the FDA system. Thus, the labeler code, which is the first segment of the three segment NDC code uh, that was entered in a product SPL, must match the labeler code request SPL's labeler name, DUNS number, and the labeler code information. So we're now ready to move on to the Q&A portion of our session. If you haven't already sent in your questions, then please feel free to do so now using the WebEx chat panel or the WebEx Q&A panel. Also, if you're watching the recording of this presentation and you want to send us a question, please contact our I4I support team at support at I4I.com. Okay, looks like we are not receiving any more questions, uh, but if you still have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at support at i4i.com and we will, um, uh, we will answer your questions uh, there. But thank you so much for attending today's webinar and uh, have a great rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank you.